The EU should sanction France and countries like France that impoverish Africa, making these people leave. Africans should be in Africa, not at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea, said the Foreign Minister for Italy, Luigi Di Mario. Oh no, he didn't say that. Yes, he did. Oh no, he didn't say that. Oh yes, he did. When President Macron of France heard the news, he hit the roof. He called in the Italian ambassador to France for a proper dressing down. Although the exploitation of Africa by France is an open secret, you're not supposed to talk about it in front of the children. Well, in this video, we are going to tell you the truth. We are going to tell you how France controls 14 of its former African colonies and why it has to maintain control if it wants to remain a first world power. <laughs> Greetings. I am Sanjata and I'm leading Warrior for Power. We are the only organization dedicated to the total radical transformation of the lives of African people on planet Earth. Initially, I'm calling on all truly conscious African brothers to come and join Warrior for Power. Search YouTube for our videos or search Patreon to become a member. Warrior for Power. Our future is in our hands. Here at Warrior for Power, we are determined to free African people within this century. the 21st century. And we start this by telling you the truth. We are going to speak truth to power. It took part in the Berlin Conference of 1884, where it helped itself to large tracts of Africa. And with the notable exception of Algeria, France still controls its former African colonies. It got them to sign a backdoor agreement so it would still get access to their markets and their resources. For France to remain literally at the top table France is a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. For it to remain at the top table, it needs Africa. France is aware of how important Africa is to the well-being of France and the French. So much so, it came up with its own term. France Afrique. France in Africa. Some say that France Afrique also means France can never be separated from Africa. Without Africa, France would be no more important as Mexico or Colombia. So France will do anything 
to control or to hold on to its 14 assets or what some people might call nations. It will do anything, including kill, to hold on to its 14 African colonies. At the end of the Second World War, or the Second European War, America was the top dog in the free world. It wanted the European powers to get out of colonization. So they all had to decolonize. France decolonized, but gave its colonies flag independence. It maintained control over these colonies, people, markets, resources, and currencies. It kept control over 14 African countries. Now, let's see if I can remember them all, but don't hold me to it. You can research this yourself. It held, all, it held uh, onto Benin, uh, Niger, Cameroon, Senegal, Mali, Gabon, Central African Republic, Chad, uh, Guinea, and uh, did I say Gabon? Right. And Ivory Coast, don't forget Ivory Coast. Anyway, if I've missed any out, you'll check. So it's held, it held on to 14 of its African colonies, which it still holds on, on to today, as of uh, 2020. It still holds on to them. Under the agreements that the African states had to sign with France, they had to deposit 85% of their currency or foreign reserves with the French uh, treasury or um, finance department of France. And if they wanted to get access to their money, they could only get access to it um, in the form of a loan, an interest bearing loan. Now, in recent years, that figure has come down to 50%. Now, here's the trick that the French were able to do. The French were able to invest that money on the French Stock Exchange and in other markets around the world and make a profit from holding the money of these 14 French colonies. So think about that. Uh, you might not be getting what I'm saying. So let me try and break this down. Let me try and give you an example. So you have a brother and sister and the brother lends, gives the sister 10,000 pounds to hold for him for a while. The sister says, I'll put that in my savings account. But if you want access to that money, I can only give you that money in the form of a loan, which you have to pay back with interest. But while I've got your money, I'm going to buy Amazon shares or Apple shares. And as the share price go, goes up for those shares, <laughs> I'm going to keep them. I'm going to keep the money. <laughs> and you're not going to get any of it. And when you do want your money back, you'll have paid me interest for it as well. So on all ends, the sister's winning. This is what France is doing to its 14 colonies, and it's been doing it since the 1960s and the 1970s. So 50 odd years. Isn't that amazing? And that this, it is so ridiculous. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Apparently, it's been calculated that the 14 African countries 
deposit collectively 500 billion US dollars a year with the French treasury. It's a nice gig if you can get it. Wow. Not only that, but French multinational firms have the first right of refusal for any resources found within the 14 African colonies. So if oil is discovered, gold, uranium, platinum, copper, zinc, diamonds, the list goes on. Anything that's found in these 14 countries, the French firm has the first right of refusal. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking what I'm saying can't be true. I know, it sounds ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Okay. Um, France says that these payments that it's making or it's receiving from these 14 colonies every single year since they signed the agreement. And I'm going to tell you what that agreement's called shortly. It says that these payments are, are, is not exploitative because these payments are taxes due. And the taxes are for France's investment in these 14 countries since it had them as formal colonies. He's, France is saying that it wants to get back the money it spent. So, for example, if it built a railway from the interior of Gabon to the, to the port so it could extract the, the, the timber, then it wants money for building the railway. Now, how much can this type of infrastructure cost given they used colonial labour, which was basically no pay or very little pay? So, where's, where, where's the cost? You see, we don't see the calculations, but Francis has said to its population, and it's said around the world, which all the other countries seem to agree, that France is only receiving payments for money invested during colonialism. Now, it happens that it's, it's taken this money over 50, 60 years. Think about that. It's taken the money, it's been receiving this money for over 50, 60 years. And during formal uh, colonialization, wasn't it not receiving money at the same time? Is it not double dipping? Is it not taken out twice? Because surely the money was not staying in countries like the Ivory Coast and Senegal. Surely they were not remaining a part of, you know, these countries weren't remain, these countries remained part of, of, of the French uh, colonial system and the money wasn't remaining in these countries. The, the money was going out. So throughout the period of say 1884, right up to say um, 65, 1965 or 1970, for nearly a hundred years, France was also getting paid. So it's getting paid twice. Isn't that not ridiculous? Before France, gave its African colonies independence, formal independence. It got them to sign what it called at the time, the Pact for the Continuation of Colonialization. The Pact for the Continuation of Colonialization. Yes, I know. It's not subtle, is it? <laughs> French arrogance. Before Emmanuel Macron 
now president of France, before he came to power, he described the CFA franc as evil. But after he became the French president, he realised that France really needs Africa. In recent years, the CIFA was rebranded as the Financial Community Africa. There are two blocks, one in West Africa and one in Central Africa. The CIFA, the currency, the CIFA, which is used in the West Africa block and the Central Africa block, are both tied to the euro. The French claim that it gives these communities economic stability. The French has its own civil servants operating in these countries' uh, uh, ministries. It has its multinational firms dominating the economies of these countries. You have um, the French military based in many of these countries. France trains and arms many of the local uh, armies in these countries. Pretty much France still runs these countries as colonies. That's how powerful France's grip over these 14 African countries is. It is really we can't underestimate how powerful France is in Africa and people talk about China. Now, there are so many examples that I can give you. I'm spoke for choice. But what I need you to do is just internalize what I'm telling you. That 14 African countries are literally controlled by one mid-sized European state. And without those 14 countries, France would be a third world country. You see how important Africa is to the rest of the world, particularly to the industrialized world and the industrializing world. They cannot have their standard of living without Africa. Certainly France cannot maintain its standard of living without Africa. Now, for Azuma, if she's watching, I'm going to end this video here as part one, and I'm going to do part two in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to end this video here because people saying that the video videos are too long. So I'm going to end this video here. This is part one. Just uh, there should be a link to part two below or uh, there's a link above and just click on to part two maybe it's that way i can never tell if it's that way or that way so click on to uh, part two and follow follow the story the story continues so in part two i'm going to tell you about some of the examples that you'll be shocked by and what france is trying to do to divert attention from what it's doing in africa and maybe what we can do but above all we need to know the truth so okay that's it so i'm ending here uh, uh, especially for azuma so i'm ending here